Have you ever had the problem with Desmos where you can't see all the 100 colors of a graph or you're just tired of holding down left click to open the menu? What about you have a table list of points you want to graph but typing each point takes way too much time? Or just maybe you have a graph with 10,000 or so equations and Desmos won't let you save and you also don't want to clutter up your account's graphs and you want to save graphs locally? Or what about you have something you want to do in your graph but it's way too laggy and impossible to do in Desmos? Well, do I have a solution for you? Introducing the Desmos API with John Does Stuff. I'm John. I run the John Does Stuff YouTube channel. Um, I like Desmos quite, quite the amount. I also like JavaScript. I consider myself fairly proficient at it. And the Slim Runner's user scripts. So, so far I made uh, six user scripts. All of them are in my, in my GitHub. Uh, I go by the name of Slim, Slim Runner there. But you may be asking, what the heck are those things? Well, I decided to interview John the Stuff and Slow Runner to find out more. Basically, I learn as I go. My advice would be start messing with the code on the console. Like, uh, get yourself acquainted with the document object model. Because one thing that users don't have is that they don't provide you a GUI. Like, way to get to the, to the graphical user interface, if you will. Mm -hmm. So I have to kind of insert objects into the DOM like by force, so to speak. And another thing that I would say is that try to make the script work first and then try to jump to the GUI. The way that I learned it was I read up on the API for like five minutes and I was like, you know what, reading is kind of boring. I'm just going to hop in. If you're on the Desmos page, there's just a calc object with a capital C and you can just scroll into that and look at all the random stuff they have there and you can mess around with that and it's pretty fun to just see what different things do when you change them the first user script that i made is the desmos art tools it was supposed to add an um, easier way to change the color before the color update you had to either use the colors that desmos provided or you had to use uh, JavaScript, but that was kind of a bit. Oh, the second one that I made is the table tools. It allows you to uh, add points interactively to a table. Because usually if you want to add points, you have to either type each one manually, type them in another software with the script. You basically just, uh, I call it bind. You bind the script to a table and then just press control and click on the graph and the points get added automatically. The right click fetch. I oftentimes found myself clicking the wrong button when trying to open the color dialog, but I would thought like, you know what? Is there a way to to, simul to emulate that so that I didn't, I didn't have to click the wrong button? Instead of clicking the wrong button, let, make, let me make it the right button. Color tray patch. Hevenria? Um, from the, from the Desmos server? I had this issue that he had added a programmatically 70 plus colors to the graph and it turns out that when you add that many colors, the color tray goes beyond the screen. You, you literally can't click the colors anymore. So what that script does is that it adds uh, a scroll bar and, con and compresses the, the uh, color tray to a reasonable size again. Yeah, and the thing with that script is that I actually use exactly what Desmos, the same style that Desmos uses to recite the recite the thing because he, Desmos already resizes it so that it's in the right place. The crow, the mountains and the rocks in there, I did them with the script. Imagine if I had to move each of those points manually. Graph Archiver, this one was pretty recent, right? That's so that you can save your graphs locally, but this one saves them as text. Uh, the other one, the alternative one, is another different repository, always in my GitHub, but that one is uh, the one that I made uh, in conjunction with Cyanides. That's the, the pickler. Yeah, that, the pickling is actually a term from Python. Python. But it's uh, basically that you take a bunch of data and you package it in some way and then save it. Uh, what Cyan is doing is that he takes that same text that the script that their uh, produces and he puts it in a PNG image. And that takes advantage of the compression of the PNG so that it's actually smaller than the text. 
I made a script that would let you lock expressions in Desmos. Other user scripts, I made a MIDI controller, so like you could take inputs from a MIDI keyboard and map them onto an array in Desmos. And then I made a display for that too, but that really wasn't a user script aspect. Probably the most JavaScript intense thing I did in Desmos was I put Pico 8 inside of the Desmos window and then I just found out whatever thing in the API was used to get the source for images. And I set the image to display Pico 8. And there's also the, the ping pong graph. Most of that was just, I had a bunch of intervals running in the background that did most of the calculations which is why it was able to run at like a moderate speed. And then all that I really used Desmos for was rendering. Uh, what do you see yourself uh, doing in the future with uh, user scripts? Uh, one of the scripts that I actually have had in my mind for for the longest while, but I haven't started writing it, is uh, more tools for the tables. For example, right now you cannot copy the text or the results from the tables. You would have to go one by one copying the text or something. That and also row and column manipulation. For example, sometimes you want to like insert a new row, but you cannot. You would have to displace everything to put something new in there. Um, probably more of what I kind of do now. Every time I have like a little project I work on, I think, yeah, that was cool. But next time I want to do something cooler. And so that kind of just really spreads out my workflow because I've been getting less and less consistent with how I do stuff because each time I do something, I'm like, I want to push the limits of what Desmos can do with JavaScript more and more. So I would probably will just be trying to work on bigger projects in the future. Now, if you want to download SlimRunner's user scripts, it's pretty simple. First, download the TamperMonkey extension, an extension that works on quite a few browsers. Next, go to the GitHub pages linked in the description below, and open them. Then, navigate to the raw code, and click on the raw button. The TamperMonkey extension will then open that code, and you'll have to do next is to just install. And as usual, if you have any questions, you can go to the Desmos Discord link also in the description, or just leave a comment down below. And with that, thank you so much for watching. What would you say if uh, with Desmos Wheels do one day actually like implement uh, some maybe scripts in the actual uh, calculator? Oh damn. <laughs> that would be freaking awesome. That would be the better day for me and Desmos.